Oh, you got it up already. Wow. Okay, and he said, don't share the the little live video, or you do you share that? Go down to the post. Okay. Ah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Can I help? <laughs> I think I uh, I like when it asks for like for information. Is this on the menu? Hi. It should be. I don't know. Hi should be on every menu. Where? I'm a, I'm a mover, I'm a, 20 seconds. Do you want me to say something? Uh, sure. I'm going to just say it. Are you going to say it? Oh, okay. Will you say something? All right. Hey everybody, we are the John Hartford Fiddle Tune Project, and we're gonna play you a bunch of John Hartford Fiddle Tunes. You ready? Yeah. All right.
Country Cocktail Lounge to hang out with us on a Sunday evening. It's very cool of you. Yay. Um, we are also live streaming to, you know, we are beaming into many homes uh, around the globe. Around the globe, all of them. We're global, and we're pretty excited about it. So hello to everyone out there. Um, thanks for, for joining us and tuning in. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to just, here's the deal. <laughs> we just... Let's just, let's just clarify a few things. So we are the live version of the John Hartford Fiddle Tune Project, which was a Grammy losing album. Yes. Uh, and uh, we were nominated, but damn that Billy Strings. Yes. You know, what are you gonna do? Uh, he's a juggernaut, a nice man, Great a man. nice man. No, um, but we, uh, we come from, what we are doing is we are playing the tunes that John Hartford wrote basically through the last 20 years of his life. Um, Tristan's actually been working as, uh, as an archivist uh, for the John Hartford estate, and so, I don't know, how many tunes were there originally when, when they started going through the notebooks? Uh, I think there's about 3,000 of them, something around 3,000. Mm -hmm. We're not going to play 3,000 of them, though, <laughs> and there's only, they picked... Uh, 176 for the book. Yeah, there's a book that with a lot of great information which we have for sale over there mm -hmm. and a lot of like John's original drawings and a lot of his original um, his handwriting of all the music and mm -hmm. things like that um, but we're just going to do some of the ones off of the record and then a couple other ones too but this one's on the record this yeah this next, this next one. one's on the record and uh, we'll tell you a little bit about each one of us as we go along but um, we are just really really grateful uh, to John Hartford's family and to the estate for sort of having us do this and carry on the, this, this legacy and be a part of this thread. And so one of, our big, one of our big goals is to get you guys excited about the tunes. Maybe you'll go learn them. Maybe you'll go jam on them somewhere. Maybe we'll get to play them with you at some point. Yeah. So we're playing them for you so that then you can go play them and then we can all play them together. See how that's going to work? So this one's Little Country Town. And um, a lot of the tunes, as you go through the book, you can see that you know, as John was, was writing them, a lot of times I think he just looked out the window of the bus and just point, you know, just called it whatever he was looking at at the time. There's, there's one called Little Black Wire. This mm -hmm. one's Little Country Town. We drove here from Missouri this morning and we went through, I think, every little country town yeah, there was. Yeah, conceivable. So, yeah, so I think maybe it's one of these.
so much. And so this next one is um, it's one called Don Brown and the Boys, and Don Brown was a great mandolin player from uh, Southern Missouri, which is where John's from. And uh, I can't remember the name of the band that they had. Um, but there's a, there's a really rich bluegrass and old time and fiddle tradition in Southern Missouri. And um, I think that this is sort of uh, John's tribute to, to that, the time he spent there learning about bluegrass and old time. Yeah, let's do it. as we were kind of choosing the tunes and trying to figure out you know which ones we were going to do which ones we got excited about and and one of the things you know all of us um, you know we we read music and we we can transcribe and do all those things and so we were sort of reading through the book you know and looking through the tunes some of the tunes have been recorded so you know we could listen to them that way and then some of them we were reading in the book and one of the things that we all sort of came to realize was that some of these tunes we're almost positive John never actually picked up a fiddle and played. Because had he, he would realize that some of the things that he's asking of us are entirely impossible. <laughs> the, you know, for my fiddle players in the crowd, there are some fingerings that are just not, they're not human, they're, it's not a thing that humans can do. So, um, it's, and, and you can tell that like he had this musical idea and then he sort of filled in some other parts around it where it was like, ooh, that's a cool hook or whatever and then I'll just kind of, I'll put some filler notes in there. And sometimes you try to play through the filler notes and you're like, absolutely not. That's not a, that's not a thing. Um, so we've, we've been having a good time 
sort of finding ways around that stuff, you know, and still still keeping. And then some of them, you know, flow perfectly, you know, right from the right from the get go. But that's part of the journey I think that's been really fun for us as, you know, sort of music tune nerds. I think <laughs> <laughs> all three of us. Um, are we gonna do Fletcher Rag? I Is think that so. what we're gonna do? Excellent. By the way, yes. that first tune that we did was yes. Tennessee Politics. Oh, we I didn't don't know if you knew it. that. I, I don't think we said it. We didn't say it. I mean, you might have known it. It's sort of the... It's it's worth saying because it is a great tune. It's kind of the hit. Perhaps my favorite. Yeah, it's kind of the hit from the record. All the kids are doing it. All the kids are doing it, and it is a cool tune worth learning, the Tennessee Politics. Did, wait, did you say it was your favorite? It might be my favorite. Whoa. It might be my favorite, too. Stop it right now. Let's see if we hear it played in the old-time jam after this. Oh, yeah. It could happen. It could happen. Right? <laughs> Everyone is playing it. This one, I'm almost positive, is uh, written for uh, the great Fletcher Bright. Yes. Uh, a wonderful, stately, as you said last night, stately man. It's a stately tune for a stately man. Uh, we miss him dearly. He was a great... Um, if I were John Hartford, I would have written a tune about Fletcher Bright, too. Yeah. So... Um, 
So this album uh, that we were talking about, the John Hartford Fiddle Tune Project, uh, has 17 tunes on it and an unbelievable cast of characters that you know Tristan and I were absolutely honored to be a part of. And one of those actual characters is here with us now. And so we thought we'd make her play the tune that she played on, on the record. And just in case oh, you nice. forgot, <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. do what I can. Yeah. Um, this is one called Long White Road. And um, again, feel maybe like he was just looking out the window of the bus, right? And just yeah. wrote a tune and went, oh, there it is, Long White Road, <laughs> you know? So how are you? Doing well. You great. Guys sound so great. It's so Thank nice you. to hear this. It's lovely to, it's lovely to, to have you. you. Cool. Yeah. All right. I'll try to not blast you with the guitar. I'll let you do it the first round. You bet. Yeah, uh, yeah you just, I'll, I'll, I'll get her kicked off. Let's see. Wait, I'm going to move this just a little bit. Sorry. There we go. All right. was lambasted recently, so I <laughs> bought a lot of lamps. Who la lamba lambasted? lambasted? No way it's lambasted. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> lambasted. Hmm. Uh, who, who did that to you? Ellie. Oh, sure. That makes sense. I'm sorry. Do you have lamps now? I got so many lamps now. Oh, I have to cross him. Well, you don't have to. Tell you, them what to do now. Okay, well, it, now is sort of an audience participation. You saw the Britney participation part, but now it's the audience participation part. Yeah, it's part. not just Britney, it's, it's all of you. Yeah. We, got a, we got a little bit of a shout chorus here. We're gonna, it's pretty straightforward, but it is going to come by pretty quickly. It's, um, the old man's drunk and he won't come down. That's, those are the Can lyrics. Can you do that? The old man's drunk and he won't come down. Yeah. You got it? It's, Can we it's, try it as a group? Yeah, you do it. You conduct it. The old man's drunk and he won't come down. The old man's drunk and he won't come down. Very good. Yes, yes. Did you know, did you, there is sort of a, a 
Hartford legacy royalty here, and the people that live in John's house are here. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Janie and Bob, question mark. Yay! Oh, that's so exciting! I, I hope it's not weird when we drive by. I hope that's okay. Way. We did that just the other we day. We did, we did. <laughs> we, we mean well, we promise. <laughs> The old man's drunk. This is a song written about someone in this bar, probably. Yes. All right, here we go. <laughs> wasn't on the album, which means that um, along with the people we played it for last night, you're some of the only people to ever hear this tune, essentially. Yes. This, yeah, that's a good this, one. Yeah. Is there going to be a second volume? Oh, absolutely. I, I, think that, um, I think that's one of the reasons we're doing this, so that we can sell out of the first volume and then make a second one. No. Um, there are so many other amazing tunes in the book that, you know, haven't haven't even really seen the light of day just yet, you know? And um, so so I think that, uh, I think you could absolutely be looking at a volume two for sure. So yeah, we're excited about that. If you're interested in volume one, it is, like I said over there, we also have um, some t-shirts that are pretty cool and a variety of stickers featuring John's various doodles. Um, when I was archiving so my job working for the estate was John would like wear a vest and carry around like three by five index cards and write everything on them. And my original estimate was that there was about 20,000 of them. Um, but I think it's more like 35,000. And, and it was fascinating just to see, cause there's lots of great like, very deep journaling and like song ideas and these tunes or history or stories that people told him but also just like his grocery list or like what to pack for a flight that's right yeah, yeah. and uh, my one of my personal favorites him practicing drawing the kiss logo <laughs> um, <Yep. laughs> uh, and um, so there's lots of great you get little doodles over there at the merch table underneath the dartboard you have to wait till the darts game is over that's but right 
And I, I like this next tune a lot. I, it's kind of a, it's a different vibe than many of the other ones that he's written. Also, I like the title because it is in sort of classic John Hartford form, a very confusing, purposeful misspelling of what is normally a very common word. Uh, so the tune is called, I can't even pronounce it, it's called Irish Familiarity. So not familiar, now I can't even do the right one. Familiar, uh, famili uh, yeah. Familiarity? Familiar familiarity. Familiarity. That, that's the first one. You have right. to do the second. There's yeah, a lot more eyes in, the, in this spelling. Yeah. And uh, and so I like the idea that it's sort of a rare, rare families, rare Irish families. <laughs> Uh, we're going to do one of the few uh, songs with words on, from the record. Um, and this is a, it's just a cute little song. It's very like, um, I don't know, it's just very cute. <laughs> it's, I, I think with a lot of the tunes in the book and stuff, I mean, these were tunes that John wrote and then never recorded. And lots of them were ones that like, maybe you didn't get the chance to record, but also it's like we all write music too. It's like you write a lot of stuff that you just write and finish and then you don't ever really play for anybody or that you would like maybe go and edit or something before you played it on stage or something like that. And we're just kind of, <laughs> please, when I die, do not, 
this, unearth all of your do not un Yeah, ed feel free to edit. <laughs> it's, Fair enough. Don't read the poems. <laughs> um, or just burn them. Please yes. burn the poems. I um, have a high school friend that we have a pact that whichever one of us dies first goes immediately to their house and just burns all their journals yeah. immediately. <laughs> Yeah. Just take all that stuff Because it's out. important to have while you're living, but then once you're gone... Yeah, I'm not I'm not Charles Dickens. No one needs to, you know, put, you know... Now John I'm is not a, John Hartford. John's in a different matter. league. Like these, A lot of his stuff is really great, but there's definitely a lot of words in this that I'm sure he... Actually, you know, now that I say it, he probably would have just done it exactly like this, but... Yeah, but, uh, as a matter of fact. It's about playing the fiddle and then trying to switch to the guitar. I think it's also about an existential crisis and the poignancy of loving music more than anything. Yeah, including your own... To the detriment of your own... Like, the love of music becoming a higher priority than your, like, uh, survival instincts. Right. Yeah. Hmm. The ends of new fingers get sore On fiddles they holler Hey, second one more In time the crowd is all stomping the floor As to pain this old music is blind Before we can stop We all start up again Raising another old tune in the din And nowhere inside any sign of an end To this music seducing my mind you sure got that right, my wife says to me. As I read her this scratchy old bad rhymery, you're the last one to stop and the first one to stay till everyone's cased up and gone. There never was nothing no better than love. At least there ain't nothing that I can think of. And fiddling will get it, then drive it away if you're not careful when to go home. <laughs> knows when to just disappear but for me it seems one more tune I must hear and through all this fiddling it starts to be clear well we'll never be top of the charts <laughs> but it's all just as well as it all stays just so or we might have to share it with folks we don't know from places we know that we've not want to go in ways that would just break our hearts <laughs> The ends of new fingers get sore But after a while they toughen and mourn To be used what for fingers were made to be for Like the ones attached here to me Think of the things that we all might have been If not for a stroke in this old violin Think of the things that our children might be If they don't get caught up in the fiddle-dee-dee <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. It seems like a good idea, but it isn't. <laughs> My mom's watching. Hi. Hi, Mer. <laughs> Hi, Mer. Mer's it's a good thing that you let me play the film. Mer's also my booking agent. She's, she's my booking agent, too. Mer's all of our booking agents. <laughs> um, yeah, don't let your children play the fiddle. Um, ironically, um, there's a woman here who's been a friend of mine uh, since, since almost before I was born. Um, and her dad was my very first fiddle teacher. Wow. Yay! Yep, she's right there. 
And um, and her dad was her very first fiddle teacher, as a matter of fact. But um, yeah, he was. Do you? I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but at some point in the public schools in America, there used to be music programs. <laughs> I know this may come as a as a shock to, to many of you, but uh, I was when in I was one. in high school. Yes. I um, my school you had to take fine arts classes, but my school considered business classes fine arts classes. So I don't. I didn't take a single arts class. I took. I took business law one and two. Only and I'm in the America. one that, that had to make you do your taxes. <laughs> what are you doing? I did take about? music theory, but I failed. I got a D, and I failed the AP exam. Well, it was really hard. And look where you've come. Look how far you've gotten. Now. Yeah, take that. Take that, AP music theory. Um, so we're going to do not a John Hartford tune right now. For a change. For a change. <laughs> but but it matters. It matters to the story. And um, Adam Hurt, can you talk a little bit about this? This is sort of, this is, I've, I actually learned of this tune from you. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, it's the first time I ever even heard you before I knew you. On was, NPR, on right? On NPR, they played you playing this tune as bumper music while I was brushing my teeth one morning. <laughs> and I was like, isn't that lovely? Aww. I don't know who that is, but that's so lovely. Yeah. And so. fast forward all these years later, and here we are getting ready to play it together. The, you're going to make me I get know. up with you. It's all so right. sweet, isn't Tell it? the people. Well, you know, kind of a running joke for us preparing for this uh, inaugural outing with the trio has been that I'm kind of learning about John Hartford's well-known material from scratch right now. It was sort of off of my radar, but John Hartford was not off of my radar. As an old-time musician for the past hundred years, or however long I've been at it now, <laughs> I knew John Hartford as a musician obsessed with old-time fiddle music and with old-time fiddlers. My favorite historical old-time fiddler is the legendary Ed Haley from West Virginia. Yeah! And it's really thanks to John Hartford that we all can listen to and enjoy and learn from those amazing home recordings from the 40s of Ed Haley, because he heard those and he recognized how important they were to the history of American fiddling, and he made Rounder put them out on two double CD sets, and we're still learning from them and loving them. So thanks to John Hartford for that. And uh, I'm just appreciating the man and his music more and more ever since that introduction to it all. Yeah, so we're going to do an Ed Haley tune. We're going to do an Ed Haley tune. Let's do Poplar Bluff. Yes, <laughs>
you can't have John Hartford without dancing. That's right. right. That's exactly right. I <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna tell this story, and I know that Katie and Katie and Eric are out there watching, so I hope they forgive me for this. And by the way, um, those of you who don't know John's daughter and son-in-law, uh, Katie and Eric Hogue, we are we are here because. Well, we're here because they told us to be. <laughs> um, they have been so incredible at working on passing on this legacy of these fiddle tunes, and um, you know we were so we were so grateful to get to be a part of the, the album. And you know, Katie came and talked to us and said, "We just want the tunes out there even more than they are. We want to just keep moving forward with with this. Would you and Tristan go out and play them?" And we said, "If Adam Hurt will come with us, <laughs> we will do it." <laughs> And um, so we're so grateful for them. And so I feel bad telling this story, but um, the, the dancing sort of reminded me, you know, you were talking about coming to John Hartford through sort of a side door from, you know, um, from learning about it, Haley. And I actually, I came to John Hartford at a very young age and then promptly rejected it. <laughs> I was like, no, that's, I don't know what that man in that hat is doing. And I don't know what the dancing is about. I don't know what's happening there. I had gone to the Strawberry Music Festival. Have any of you ever heard of the Strawberry Music Festival? I grew up in Northern California. It's a great festival. And a friend of the family had taken me up there, really wanted me to see John Hartford, dragged me to the stage, and I watched about two tunes, and I was like, I don't, I don't know what that man is talking about. I don't. I don't understand it and it, and I just think I want to go watch Newgrass Revival now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I also would have wanted to go watch the Newgrass Revival. Well, yeah. And so and it was only later that I I look back and I go, I got a chance to see John Hartford when I was 11 years old and now the music and the whole performance and all of that. And so actually getting to stand up here and do a little flat footing and, you know, play John Hartford tunes is I feel like an apology to my stupid 11 year old you know <laughs> for my stupid 11 year old self who did not know what magic she was witnessing at the time you got you know? there in the end i got there in that's the end right. and that's what matters um we're gonna do um did we drive through calhoun county today hmm. we may have we may have we I've, drove through a lot of counties today <laughs> they're very small <laughs> they're all very they move along very quickly I, isn't calhoun county in georgia there's probably several right <laughs> raise your hand if you grew up in calhoun county anywhere this is one of this is one of your favorites. This might be my favorite. Okay. Just I don't I mean I don't it's mean a good to number. I don't mean to dissent. <laughs> but I I dissent. We must. We must. That's right. <laughs> Calhoun County, here we go. <laughs>
I feel like there can't be anything that we haven't done yet. I have not introduced each other yet. Oh, right. You just introduce yourself. I'll just wait. That's right. Okay. <laughs> no. No? Is that not I it? I mean, yes, I'll do that, but um, we didn't practice how to introduce each other, so we all That's are doing a, ourselves. That is a thing when you start a new band and you like go through, oh, okay, what kind of songs are you going to play? What kind of stuff are you going to do? And then you work on your stage banter. And one of the things you work on is like, who's gonna introduce who and what things you want them to say about you. And so we got into the middle of the show last night, which was our debut show, and realized that we hadn't, we hadn't worked out any of that stuff. We didn't do it. So we're just introducing ourselves and we're gonna just toot however much of our own horn we feel like it. And you know, go. Okay. You go. Hello. <laughs> My name's Tristan Scroggins. Um, I'm originally from, my guess, New Mexico, but I live here now, and um, I played music pretty much my whole life. There's pictures of my dad in jams, in bluegrass jams, playing the banjo, and I'm cradled right here underneath his arm while he's playing the banjo. Um, and he actually was the one who showed me John Hartford. Um, he's not the biggest John Hartford fan necessarily, but he was like, you should listen to this. This be important it's in important, your life. Yeah. Um, Someday you'll be sitting on these chairs, on this stage, right. playing John Hartford. He was James. preparing me. He, he, he's a seer. But, um, <laughs> he, has the, he has the gift. But I've been very fortunate in my career and gotten to do lots of cool stuff, including work for the Hartford Estate for many years as sort of a freelance archivist. Um, I was also on the Grammy, nominate, Grammy Losing Album, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I've been nominated a couple times for the International Bluegrass Music Association's Mandolin Player of the Year. And I won their Writer of the Year, which is confusing because it's not songwriter, it's print media journalism writing, but I won that award. And I... Please make welcome Tristan Scroggins. Oh. <laughs> How many orders are you going to get, Paul? Um, all right, I'm Megan Lynch Chowning. Hi, everybody. Um, Yay, and uh, I am originally from Northern California, but I also live here, and I have for almost 20 years now. You've been here for and almost as long as I've been alive. Can you not, maybe, <laughs> with that? I, I, I mean, it's, I'm f super cool with my age, and then until you say things. We had a lot of conversation in the car about who Billy Idol was, oh. and. It's been a long two days. I was just listening to some of the great Sirius, you know, the channels on Sirius or whatever, and I did, and I was just like, it's good background music or whatever, and uh, and when I heard "Who's Billy Idol" come out of the back seat, I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't, I don't know what what matters anymore. I'm just glad Tristan beat me to asking that I can't, question. I can't. Well, that's not because you're too young. That's just because you weren't paying attention. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, I live here now, and uh, let's see. I um, I was also on the Grammy Losing album, um, and I have been playing and teaching fiddle for over 35 years at this point. Um, I've been playing the fiddle for 43 years or something. And uh, my husband and I run bluegrass and old-time music camps at our house, uh, which is just up there. If you want to learn to play bluegrass and old-time music, come to our house. It's super fun. Yeah. And um, I'm also the seven-time national fiddle champ champion. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my you, turn? You go. Okay. This is very fun because Adam could not like anything less than tooting his own horn. <laughs> and so this is a very uncomfortable moment for him, so let's all just lean in, yeah. shall we? It's right down there with like raw onions, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yeah. my favorite thing. Uh, hello Dees, hello Facebook, I'm Adam Hurt. I grew up in St. Paul, Minnesota, where I developed an obsession starting at age 11 with old time banjo and fiddle music. And because of that obsession, I now live in Southern Virginia. I don't live here. <laughs> but it's fun to have the opportunity to come here and play music with my friends. And when I'm not here playing music with my friends, I'm at home in Southern Virginia teaching via Zoom about 60 banjo and fiddle students who were meeting with me that way, by the way, before 2020. It was like a pandemic-proof way of making a living as a musician, and I didn't even know it until 2020 hit. Uh, and it's super fun to get to do that for my day job. So, thanks. I'm very hurt, lucky. Everybody. Thank you. Adam, Adam 
Adam's also one of the most just like infamous banjo players. That's true. Oh. Infamous. 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 Oh, thank I, you. I was help. Adam recorded a new record that's gorgeous, um, and I was in the studio. It's available here for sale. It's available for sale, <laughs> and uh, I was I was in the studio, and there was a really a, amazing session going on in the other studio across the hall. And you had like Sam Bush and um, Jerry Douglas and all these people who all like heard they were like oh Adam Hurts in the other studio and yeah. like came in to like watch the session and Jerry Jerry Douglas was said that he bought a banjo because of you. he heard you play and he was like I wanted to learn how to play the banjo Aww. if these people weren't all so nice it would have been really scary That's right. uh -huh. so just because we've talked about Adam's banjo playing for the last five minutes we're gonna make him play the fiddle so yeah. so there's that yeah this isn't a banjo anymore is no. it? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I will also say, um, again, I want to just say thank you to all the people that have tuned in on Facebook and all of that. We really appreciate all of you that have come in person, all of you that are joining us here. And thank you for any of you who um, have participated in the online tip jar or the real life tip jar. That is very, very kind of you. And we just, oh, oh. Everyone say hello to Alex. Hi, Alex. He is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's He's heading up your step. Your My father-in-law, father that's right. <laughs> yeah. And it's working. <laughs> it's his birthday. Don't take his money. Randy. <laughs> okay. Well, in the meantime... <laughs> We're going to play, actually, this is one of my favorite tunes from the record. Uh, Tristan and I were lucky enough to play it on the record. Yeah. And I love it because I think it is actually the most simple tune in the book. Yeah. And I think it's really accessible for people in that way. Yeah. So if you want to learn a tune from the book, but maybe you're a newer player, this is this is your jam. But also, if you're a more you know accomplished player, you can jam out on it. It's super fun. So we're going to play John Rice. I hear where your A is. Oh, um... I'll just do it after. Okay. Yeah, after. Oh, she wants him
you I don't know, and I find that one of the ways that you can get to know people really well is to learn about their pet peeves, learn about stuff they hate, you know? I think that's one of the reasons my husband and I fell in love. We just hated the same stuff, you know? And we were just like, let's hang out, <laughs> you know? And we've been together 10 years, so I feel like that was a thing. Um, so here's one of my pet peeves. One of my pet peeves is the fake encore, right? You know the one, right, where it's like, oh my gosh, you guys have been amazing, and then you go just, just over there. Like, where are we going to go, right? And then everyone's like, no, more. And you're like, what? Even though you have, like, two encore things written on your set list, because we're all just playing the game now. Tristan called it adult peekaboo. You know, it's just like, it's ridiculous. So here's the deal. That was our last song. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now we're going to play two more. Okay? So can we just dispense with all of that? We just, we just move right. Thank you. All right. Oh, oh no. Uh, you guys. They, oh, perfect. Right on cue. Exactly. Exactly. So... We're gonna do two more and then that really will be the end. <laughs> and that's it. And then we're gonna be over there if you wanna uh, hang out with us or check out all the stuff we have or just like say hi or whatever. Then be a jam and then there's gonna be the old time jam like right there. Right there. Yeah. It's gonna be so fun. It'll be like this, but quieter. <laughs> really? Maybe not quieter. No, I feel like, yeah, it might be louder. louder. But we're gonna Science. play a quiet, we're gonna play a quiet we'll thing. We'll play a quiet thing now. Yeah. I love a waltz. Anyone who knows me knows I love a waltz, so let's do a waltz. Okay. This is a waltz from the record. Absolutely, absolutely one of my favorite melodies. It's called How Can We Love.
Okay, now there's one more, and then that's it. Okay. Oh, no, no, this is not how it works. That's... This that's is another audience participation song. Um, it goes a little bit, it goes by a little slower, so if the previous audience participation one came up too quickly, don't worry. It's all right. You have a second chance uh, to make a first impression here. Um, so, <laughs> we will be paying attention. So, so this, th the idea to do this song as our closing number actually came from uh, a dear friend uh, of ours who is sitting right here, Dr. Mark. Everybody say hi to Ooh. Dr. Mark. <laughs> and Dr. Mark is, how should we say, one of our most prolific campers. <laughs> he comes to he comes to all our camps. I think he's taken up new instruments just to come to, to more camps. Um, and he is a, he's also our dentist. So um, if you're looking for a great dentist, he's just further up north on Gallatin. He's fantastic. Look at look at these. It's fantastic. It's anyway, got a thing going on. Do you, we'll talk later. Okay. We'll talk with it. Yeah. And so at the end of all of our camps we do kind of a recording session uh, where the campers get to uh, come together and and play with the instructors and and work and play a tune that they've worked out together and dr mark chose this song uh for his camp recording song uh, just a couple of months ago at camp and it it hit me so strongly that this is this is the song that encompasses and encapsulates everything that I think we're trying to do with bringing these tunes to you and hopefully building more and more community and trying to bring people together around music. And um, so we're going to do it. You'll know what to do. Tristan will give you the eyebrow signal, you know. Um, and we also love it because the melody is actually a combination of Turkey in the Straw and Sally Ann. And then I think John put words to it at the, you know. A time-honored tradition. Yeah. Roanoke is just turkey in the straw. Uh, isn't everything important just turkey in the straw? Oh. <laughs> so, you guys ready? Are you ready for this? All right. Thank you again. Thank yeah. you to Chris. Thank you so yeah. much to Chris, our sound guy, for being so awesome. Yes. And thank you to Jeff Burke and everybody at Dee's for having us. And I believe this is sponsored by WMOT, Amy oh. Alvey and Craig Havikur. So thank you to them yeah. for, for, and for all they're doing to, to promote old time oh, music. They Mike, they so rule. They both so rule. <laughs> Wish we 